Yeah, Hamas said we are releasing hostages and then there was a ceasefire and now uh, they didn't release. Again, they started bombarding. What happened? Hamas is winning it psychologically on the, on the cyberspace. Right. But on the battlefield, Israel can demolish them in one, one and a half months is what I said. So in case Israel had started during surgical strikes, as I assumed it would, okay. then the war would be long over. Surgical strikes, the civilians will die, no? No. In surgical strikes, civilians do not die. Okay. What we are doing is we are just bombing the hell out of localities wherein collateral damage is occurring. On the other hand, they also say that Israel is uh, financing Hamas. Israel funded Hamas as a counterbalance to Fatah. Yeah. Fatah was PLO's military wing. If an election is held today in the Gaza Strip and West Bank, even in West Bank, Hamas, Hamas will win hands down. And that's what they did for. I mean, that's Correct. that's why they did all this for. Correct. So I think uh, Israelis lost their plot here. Namaste all. Today with me, I have uh, Wing Commander Raji Ji. Last time we had spoken about Hamas and Israel in length. Uh, today we are here to discuss about uh, why there are so many wars happening. You know, we we first had Russia Ukraine and then Hamas uh, terrorists attacking Israel, and then now there is Iran bombing Pakistan and then the Red Sea attack. So we'll find out from him where, where the world is heading uh, towards. So we spoke in length about Hamas and Israel war. So what is it? I mean, did the, the Hamas said we are releasing hostages and then there was a ceasefire and now uh, they didn't release. Again, they started bombarding. What happened? I mean, where, where are we now? Because there's no news whatsoever what happened all of a sudden. So I'll take you through the uh, whole war scenario, the status update of the war. Mm -hmm from our last episode okay. from our in our last episode i did mention that in case this war hamas is winning it psychologically on the on the cyberspace right. but on the battlefield israel can demolish them in one one and a half months is what i said so in case israel had started during surgical strikes as i assumed it would okay. then the war would be long over hamas oh, would be know. gone okay. or hamas leadership would be gone uh -huh. And a sense of peace or stability or tranquility, a sense of it. I am not saying completely. Surgical strike, the civilians will die, no? No. In surgical strike, civilians do not die. Okay. What we are doing is we are just bombing the hell out of localities wherein collateral damage is occurring. When you say, I will tell you the difference between surgical, probably your subscribers would also benefit. Mm -hmm. When you say a surgical strike, you are talking of a CEP which is very small, circular error probability. So let us say I drop a bomb here on, on this hospital, chair, on, on this chair, on, on, on this chair. chair. Okay. If the bomb or the missile were to hit this chair mm. with an error of let us say 1 meter, okay. but the warhead potential is to destroy 5 meters, okay. then this will be gone okay. and the collateral damage would be limited. Okay. But in dumb bombs, what we say gravity bombs, we just fire it or we just drop it from the aircraft and based on the wind conditions and gravity, physics takes its uh, toll right. and it lands somewhere. Okay. So when dumb bombs are there, the circular error probability increases. Okay. So when we say surgical strike, uh -huh. it has got two elements. Okay. One is good intelligence, okay. saying that yes, Kiran is here at so and so time, 5.50 in the evening, he is taking a call at so and so location, lat long. Right. Okay, it's all planned there. It, no, uh, that intelligence has to be there. Specific, right. real, actionable intelligence has to be there. Okay. Once I have this actionable intelligence, mm -hmm. I should have the weapons that can go to that point and kill that person at that point. Okay. Let us say I, I want to kill Kiran here. Mm -hmm. Kiran should get killed, but probably the rest of the people in, uh, sitting doing video editing and all right. should be safe. They may be hurt by Sharpnel, okay. but they should not be killed. If you remember Americans killing Soleimani, oh, Iranian uh, right. commander, right. so that was a surgical strike. Okay. okay, They pinpointed his location, they had intelligence, mm. then the Reaper drone hit him with a missile. Okay. So that is a surgical strike. So based on Israeli history, mm. Israeli history and its intelligence service Mossad's history which we covered in the first session, I thought this would be their plan of action. Then they came out, Netanyahu came out, that is the Prime Minister of Israel, came out with a plan of action saying that we want to displace the entire population. We covered this in session 2 or 3, I think, which was uh, objected to 
very loudly by, by all US, the yeah. Muslim countries surrounding this one and also by the world in general. Correct. So, they had to backtrack. Mm. But they were smart. Uh, Jews are known for their intellectual abilities. They were smart. So, they said, if I cannot move them physically, I will force them to move by destroying the civil infrastructure in Gaza. Okay. So, what does the population require to survive? Require, we require power centers, Correct. we require water, okay. we require sewage facilities, mm. we require hospitals, so basic communities. Basic communities. Right. So, if I have to survive in Bangalore, mm. I, unless these are there, unless water bodies are there, I can sustain on bore wells for probably what, two days, three days, five days, week. Right. After right. that, it is gone. Right. So, all these basic infrastructure facilities were hit mm. and hit using dumb bombs mostly. Uh, a, uh, internet sources again I do not know how much we can put our faith on them but they give that the surgical weapons used or a precise weapons used is in single digits and very low single digits in this war. I okay. will give you a comparison. In uh, Russia Ukraine war which is going on for two years and in, at an industrial scale okay. the number of civilian deaths is comparable to the two and a half or three months war of Gaza, uh, Israel Gaza war. So, is so you can understand that how uh, uh, how dumb bombs have been used in this uh, without a care for human life. So the magnitude of Hamas Gaza war is more than the no, the, not the magnitude. No. What I'm saying is the respect for human life that is there on one side of the war or in one war that is the Russia Ukraine war is not shown on the other side. By not. both participants. I am not saying right. Israelis have done it, these Apollos have not done it. Both of them are guilty for it. Correct. They hold such hatred for each other right. that they have lost all respect for human life. Right. So, th and the problem because of th what has happened because of this is mm -hmm. they are focusing on mass bombing and hence losing out on closing the Hamas leadership and declaring victory. On the other hand, they also say that Israel is uh, financing Hamas. He, that is also I mentioned to you in, uh, I think, uh, session 2. Right. Israel funded Hamas as a counterbalance to Fatah. Yeah. Fatah was PLO's military wing. Right. Now they are gone. Now they are gone. Right. So, you brought in a, brought in a player the problem to solve the other, to solve problem. The other problem, but this has no become problem. a problem. Uh, we have that uh, story in Panchatantra, right? right, right a right. mouse comes and cries before a sage. Yeah, and it becomes a cat and then a cat to a, a, a tiger, something of that kind. Right. So, we have a Frankenstein monster has come to board, which has got more radicalized elements than right. the Fatah. But it was funded, founded by Israeli security system. Right. And it is also said that Pakistan is supplying shells to Israel. What do you have to say? We will come to that. So, so, now you said that Israel has won. Okay. It has not won. Okay. It has lost heavily in terms of equipment and manpower mm. which we discussed i told you this is right. what i because in a in a urban battle the offensive elements always tend to get ambushed and hit so this has happened there are numerous videos uh, which we will not be able to show for obvious reasons they are uh, bloody and uh, images of war which would like which would not like our subscriber to see right. but they show markava tanks Bradley uh, IFVs being blown up, Israeli soldiers being targeted by snipers, all these are awash on the internet. So, there are huge casualties that they are taking. Credit to them, they are sticking to their guns and sticking to their plan of removing the Gazans by destroying the civil. You may have your views on it, but that is their plan, they are working on that plan. The Hamas on the other hand, is winning it in the eyes of the Muslim population all over the world. Why? Israel defeated most of the Arab nations in 1967 in a six-day war. Right. Till date, since its inception in 1948, it has either fought all the Arab nations to a standstill, mm. taking more land from them, or won wars outright. This is the first instance wherein a non-nation entity 
has been able to stop the IDF, at least in the Muslim eyes, at least in the Muslim population size, for such a long time. Right. So, do you think they have stopped Israel? They have stopped. They have, they have inflicted tremendous casualties. I am not saying Hamas has escaped. Right. Hamas has also taken a hit. Right. It's like a boxing match right. wherein two heavyweights are going against each other. Right. On the face of it, one weighs 50 kilos, lightweight, that is Hamas, and the, we thought the other was 120, and within a week, he'll, within one bout, he'll, there will be a knockout. Correct. Unfortunately, he's taking the hits, still standing, right. and delivering the odd blow back. Right. So, the crowd will always vouch for the underweight. Right. So, I mean, I'm giving you a sports analogy. Right. So, that is what is happening here. Hamas is winning the hearts of the Muslim population all over the world. And if today... And can that be justified? Is it fine? Uh, it depends on where you come from, uh, Kiran. And uh, I can frankly see why it's, they support it. Because if an election is held today in the Gaza Strip and West Bank, even in West Bank, Hamas, Hamas will win hands down. And that's what they did for. I mean, that's Correct. that's why they did all this for. Correct. So, I think uh, Israelis lost their plot here. They should have gone in for a quick offensive, which I talked about a week or two at the max, killed the leaders and then said, yes, we have killed the leaders. These are still absconding. We will track them and we will kill them. No, but then getting back the hostages was also an important priority and that is why they have got, got into the no. strip, no? Uh, we mentioned in session 2, I think, that so the Israelis adopt something called as a Simpson's choice. Okay. I think we spoke about it, if I remember. Yes, I okay. Israelis have a principle in their national security doctrine which says we will not negotiate with terrorists. So, during this entire operations when they are doing dumb bombing mm -hmm. or uh, carpet bombing as it is called, there is no hope for the hostages because if I am bombing, let us say, an area of one square kilometer, I don't know where the hostages are. I am bombing the hell out of them. They also knew that hostages were in the tunnel. So, these bombs destroy the tunnel as well? The, you are assuming that the hostages will be in the tunnels. Mm. They may be in the tunnels, they may not be in the tunnels. Yeah, they, they, may they may be outside also. Sure. And it's not that they were not bombing the tunnels. Mm. They were bombing the tunnels also. Right. So, my point is, if the operation, as you say, was targeted to get the release of the hostages, right. then it should have been surgical strikes and not carpet bombing. Okay. The way they have gone in is, as I said earlier, to ensure that the civilian infrastructure to support a 2 million population is not there, forcing the population to go elsewhere. Right. And you said, uh, you know, when we are talking now, you said America has to put their foot soldiers in the thing, mm. Yemen. So, that's exactly what Israel has done in Gaza. So, you think that's not working? See, it has worked in a sense that it has stopped Hamas from repeating that large-scale attacks of October 7th and 8th. Uh, if you look at October 2nd week, there were still a lot of rocket attacks going towards uh, Israeli cities. Correct. The ferocity of that, the intensity of that, the what is it, the repetitiveness of that has stopped. We heard that it happened on New Year as well. On the so jam. These often, see, one not print prick attacks will always happen. There. Okay. But the scale of it, the magnitude of it, has and come the repeatability down. of it has come down. Right. Because most of them have gone underground or have been killed. Right. Most of the weapons have been uh, destroyed. Right. So, that way, yes, by putting ground troops, you always control territory. And when you control territory, you control the happenings around that area. So, as a whole, is it is it not a good win for Israel that they have got the territory now? So, no more attacks on uh, Israel from Gaza because the entire Gazans have come out. So, there is no one to fire rockets from Gaza. It's, it's a win. No. No? Huh? No, I don't think so. Why, I'll tell you. See, it's a tactical win. Okay. Netanyahu may claim... Tactical win for Israel or Hamas? Uh, for Israel in the eyes of Netanyahu. Right? In the eyes of Netanyahu, for, as a politician, when he talks to his Israeli population, he will say, yes, in spite of the international pressure, I have not bowed down. Right. I have instructed the IDF to go all out and destroy everyone, destroy everything that is there, so that our citizens are not threatened henceforth. So, it is a tactical victory for Netanyahu. But you should understand where Israel is. Israel is a small speck in an ocean of you know, the country surrounded, surrounded by, uh, by them. enemies who are hell-bent on destroying it. We write same ideology everyone shares. Yes. Even though they share the same ideology, there is hatred. Right. 
Correct. Cutting across centuries. So when it comes to their internal fights, they hate each other. Shias Correct. and Sunni that you are talking Correct. about. But when it comes to Jews and Muslims, Correct. they all stand together. They all stand together. Now, you should also look at, are you by your actions empowering your enemy or degrading your enemy? And they are empowering their they enemy. They are empowering their enemy. Correct. So, that is where I feel that Israel has lost the plot. So, let us look at another incident. 1972 Munich Olympics, mm. Jewish PLO, uh, PLO terrorists right. attacked the Jewish camp, athletics Athlet camp, yeah. killed the uh, athletes, yeah. athletes there. Right. What did Golda Meir, Golda Meir do, the Israeli Prime Minister then? She did not go after PLO and the, the what do you call, Palestinians. Okay. She went after the specific terrorists, wherever they were hiding. They, they went to what that particular country. Yes. They, they, yeah. She went to Europe. She went everywhere, went behind them, surgically killed them. They, she made, The Mossad did a couple of mistakes. They killed a waiter thinking that he was terrorist, but this is all small collateral damage. What did she achieve? In the eyes of the world, Israel was seen as a responsible power. Right? In the eyes of the world, Israeli intelligence was regarded as the best. Correct. Right? It had the empathy, the sympathy of the entire world for it. Now, in in contrast to that, what has the present operation achieved? It's, it's, it's vice versa. Israel has been pulled to the ICJ. Right. If you have heard the comments of the Irish lady. No, South African pulled them to ICJ. South Africa pulled it, but the lawyer representing was Irish lady. Okay. If you heard her comments, fantastic. Whereas the opposing lawyer could not even define genocide. Mm. I mean, it was, they, they may easily manipulate the ICJ and get some ruling in favor of them. That is how courts work generally all over the world. We are used to it in yeah. India. But they have lost heavily in the eyes of the world. And today, looking at Hamas able to stand against the mighty idea of for close to three months, it will bolster the confidence of the Hezbollahs, the Houthis, everyone in and around that area. Everyone will start to yes. jump now. Last, all the Arab nations in and around Israel are controlled by autocracies. Okay. Whether it is Egypt, mm. President Sirsi, propped up by the West, right? Saudi Arabia, Iran, King. all of them are Iraq. All of them are either proxy democracies installed by US or kings and uh, this one. So, they are all fragile. Right. You never know what happens. When. So, if the local population were to understand that, yes, I have a new leader in Hamas. Imagine the riot that is going to happen in these countries. Imagine a Jordan, which has got 3, 4, I mean, 34 or 40% of its population is Palestinians. Right. Imagine that group siding with the Hamas and asking for Hamas now. So, the pressure is on the Muslim countries to support Hamas because of the political gains. Yes, absolutely. And then, the, the, the reason for that is Israel because they, they are villains now. Correct. They are portrayed as villains. They may have some cause. Correct. That cause is not shed. On October 7th, the entire world stood with, with Israel. Israel correct, correct. Instead of making use of that, they destroyed the plot within 15 days. No, but then Netanyahu, again, he, he also wanted to be a hero in his uh, country's eyes. So he, he could have been a hero just like his uh, earlier counterpart. Right? For example, I'll take you, I'll give you another scenario. Uh, let us say um, we had that attack on uh, Patan Court, right? Correct. On Uri. Uri. And uh, which was that um, JNK mein jo hua, CRPF uh, people no, 40. Uh, uh, that is the same thing, no? Pulwama. Pulwama. Absolutely Pulwama. right. Pulwama. Correct. Correct. Pulwama. So, how did India react? India could have also reacted this way, right? India said, no, I have the moral high ground. Uh -huh. I'll retain the moral high ground. At the same time, inflict cost, inflict damage on the terrorist infrastructure. And then the surgical strike happened. So, you retain the moral high ground. Right. If somebody gives you the moral high ground on a platter, why do you want to lose it? Right. 
Israel lost it. And today, it, it will not come back to it even in a decade. But then, do, don't you think at least for a decade, the peace will be there, no? This peace cannot be there. You, if you have seen, I will uh, send you photos and videos of uh, demonstrations in Arabic world, Arab world against Israel. Today, if Hamas leader or Hezbollah leader were to call, lakhs of people will rise. So, the notion that Israel's security is enhanced because they have occupied a strip called Gaza, no. There may be no more threats emanating from Gaza. But Gaza is not their problem. The ideology that sustains that movement that, is the problem. That, that, countering that ideology is a problem of every other no, country. You could, you could manage that ideology. If you had walked around smoothly, done surgical strikes, that ideology could be managed. If you have not done that, but then you are only adding fuel to the fire. Hey, they rubbed it the wrong way then, yes. Correct. Yes, so yeah, I mean if you want to, uh, if you want to throw some light on shells being... Uh, okay, <laughs> Pakistan, right? Pakistan <laughs> selling, I mean, they, they sold donkeys, now they are right. selling uh, shells to Israel. Is it is it true? I mean, I don't believe. It, 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 see, uh, Pakistan is a country for hire. Now that we are talking about Pakistan, first let's talk about uh, they being hit by the oh. Iran. Okay. Now, we will come back to Iran. See, Iran is the player that is emerging as the mastermind or the, I would, or the, I would say, the player with the clever moves okay. in the entire Middle East. Right. right? He is able to manipulate his proxies, taking a cost on his enemy, Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel is not able to hit back at uh, Iran. Mm -hmm. So, what Israel is doing is, it is trying to use its intelligence system with the help of America to inflict some damage to Iran internally. Okay. So, you saw that bomb blast in uh, Iran mm. that killed about 100 odd people. right? And all that was pointing to a terrorist uh, involvement from Pakistan. Okay. <laughs> this is all uh, hearsay. Okay. There is no, there is evidence no concrete evidence. There yeah. is no concrete evidence. So, so Jayesh ka ek, uh, one offspring is there, okay. a Sunni militant organization in Pakistan okay. who has his uh, training camps in Balochistan. Okay. So, he, the most prob the finger pointed towards that organization. It was made to look. It was made to look or it, they did it based on some payment from okay. somewhere okay. and the sponsors were either Israel, US okay. or whosoever it is. Okay. So, once that was come to okay, that came to light, Iran launched its missiles taking out these people. Now, the reasons for it on the face of it is this. This okay. is the story that is being propagated on mainstream media. Okay. I feel there is something deeper. deeper. Okay. So, the first is US was concerned with this Houthis. We come back to the Houthi attack and the Houthis were being sponsored or were being aided by Iran. So, they wanted to show Iran that yes, we have a counterweight to you. Okay. right? So, they initiated this from the Pakistanis okay. and Israel, uh, Pakistanis again on US uh, backing did a counter strike against Iran and now the two armies are face to face. Okay. May not escalate, may escalate, only time will tell. But what Americans have done, according to hypothesis number one, okay. is they opened a new pain point on Iran's border, okay. thereby deflecting its attention, also telling it, be cautious, I have got one player here who can take you on okay. in your neighborhood. Right. It's like China prompting Pakistan to attack us, yeah. something like that, yeah. akin to that. This is one hypothesis one. Hypothesis two is we talked of boots on the ground in Houthi, in the previous uh, Houthi uh, right. session. right? Now, who will supply these boots on the ground? In the whole world, there is only one army on hire, okay. that is the Pakistani army. Okay. You may not know and it may surprise your subscribers also, that Pakistani army was hired by Jordan to kill Palestinians. Right. Way so back. about 25... Uh, 30 years back under uh, General Zia. Correct. And I think Parvez Musharraf was there yeah, as part of the team. He was the, yeah. He was, He's part he of the team. the team. Yes, yes, as part yeah. of the team. 
so they are a, they have been a army for hire for decades right. and now as their economy is collapsing they are even more desperate right. so the second hypothesis is iran thought that this guy this country is the only country that has the capability to send boots on the ground to yemen right. i do not want the yemeni yemeni hotspot to reduce i want that flame to be up so what he did is i'll trigger this fellow and create one more pain point this time from the irans right. the iran has instigated this so okay. either of these hypotheses could be true could be false everything is up in the air uh, it all depends right. i think there is a lot of geopolitical play going on our jay shankar ji uh, foreign, uh, foreign, foreign minister yeah. also visited iran and spoke to them and from there he went to england and the minute his flight took off the israel irani strike took place against pakistan oh. so if you look at pakistani media they are putting two and two together saying that jay shankar uh, ji was involved in all this which i think is uh, bs it's the canadian syndrome anything yes, that happens anything that their... happens they are trying to pin But, india on it i right. don't think that was the cause in fact it, i think it's quite the reverse right. i think jay shankar ji in my view went on a peace trip using india's influence over iran asking them to yes, reduce yes. deescalate the houthi sector yeah. so that the entire world economy is not put at risk correct, correct. i think that was the message and that it adds more credence to this story because from there he went to england so i think he was taking messages to and fro and trying to put his side of the story to the iranians it may not have worked this time but it's all a play There's so many wars going around so is there so many wars going around so what do you think they are we looking at uh, some big things coming like world war or something like that because every other country is fighting with every other country see uh, the world has never been closer to a world war over the last 1945 so 55 plus 20 about 78 years yeah, the uh, world has never been closer to a mass scale war like it is now yeah if you look at the wars in general in europe you have two major wars mm -hmm. the russia ukraine war and the armenia azerbaijan war mm -hmm. right that is on and off then you have uh, in the middle east you have wars in africa you have wars now in asia you have two big armies striking each other territories citing terrorists on each other right. and there's something happening with china and taiwan correct in taiwan uh, unfortunately for china uh, the, the election. elections result through up a surprise the person who has won the war is not pro chinese mm. and hence china is disturbed right if it was pro chinese probably over the next 3 4 years we could have seen a smooth takeover of tai china taiwan by china by china right unfortunately that process has been interrupted now the problem is china is a free player now because the us is more or less involved in too many hot spots either with israel or with ukraine so there is nobody guarding taiwan now so looking at the election result if china were to take the initiative it can gobble up taiwan okay so i mean whether it will do it or not is anybody's guess but in such times anything is possible you have poland romania looking at lands in ukraine which were traditionally theirs you have russia saying odessa kharkiv kiev is all mine so there are a lot of uh, lands that were historically belonging to some or the other region being claimed afresh and people not afraid to use kinetic means to get it because the only uh, i would say cop in the world is now weak and distracted now you're saying that i also remember amit shah ji talking about pok taking Correct. it back so you are looking at politicians talking it openly and that is always a very very dangerous sign i uh, yeah i mean taking pok back is fine no you are talking it because you are a biased stakeholder okay right taking pok it's a mountainous rugged area okay. right 
and uh, Pakistan all said and done is a militarized nation, is a ideologically uh, a, a fundamentalist nation. It is not going to give up so easily, yeah. right? unless you create the right echo conditions, which they are trying to do something. I do not know much about it, so it will not be fair on me to comment on it. Right. So, any military adventure into POK as a military uh, professional, I can tell you, is not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy, but then it is not impossible. Nothing is impossible, it's provided a, you are not averse to the body bags that come with it. No, I mean, see, some 15 years ago, if you had said, I will remove Article 370, Maybe the, the mood of the nation was not there and it, it seemed impo impossible back then. But then you know how smoothly it happened. So like that. Yeah, so I mean, can we can we talk about Maldives? So Maldives is an interesting... Uh, I know. Uh, so all, of a, all of a sudden they have popped up and it's then... It's not all of a sudden. It was something that was happening for a long time oh. and I think the security apparatus in India was aware of it. Okay. And even the diplomatic apparatus and uh, this thing is they did not want to pull the plug. They wanted Maldives to do the honours. Right. So, what was happening is over the last about 20, 25, 30 years, uh, the fundamentalist and the ideological spread of radical Islam has crept into Maldivian society. Mm -hmm. If you look at the per thousand recruitment of ISIS soldiers, Maldives ranks among the top. So, there was uh, a radicalization of the entire community or the entire country or the entire population there. It is also said that one of the islands have been taken over already by terrorists. All this news is there, there okay. but the idea being is uh, when a country is ras radicalized, yeah. that too in that kind of a faith, yeah. it is very easy for a political leader to rally himself and to get votes and to get elected on that premise. Right. That is point they, number. They all talk the same language then. Yeah. So the radicalized, radicalized. Correct. So, it, that is point number one. Point number two is, China is increasingly afraid of a principled India willing to match it and look into it eye to eye. Correct. It has restarted its string of, uh, string of pearls right. in order to control India Correct. or control India's dominance. If you look at where Maldives is, Maldives is in the Indian Ocean yes. right? and uh, all said and done, it is about 20, 30 kilometers from Lakshadweep. So, we are the first responders for any sort of problems, whether be it water, medical, anything, we are the first responders. So, here China started giving them soft loans, their way of coming into a country. Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka right. is an example. So, even Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. So, they started giving soft loans. And as any politician likes anything that is coming, uh, freebies like in India, so they started absorbing it. In Karnataka. One, in Karnataka and in many states of India, right. thereby ruining the state's revenue, but <laughs> that part. So, when you start getting addicted to this uh, freebies or to this uh, soft loans, you keep on mounting. Correct. Your dependency, your dependency on that country increases. becomes more and more Correct. and slowly st they start dictating your foreign policy. Yeah. And that, has, that is what has happened here. And Maldives is falling for it right now. He is for, has fallen for has it. Has fallen for it. Has fallen for it. Their very statements, the minister's statements. So arrogant. Arrogancy is one thing. The prime minister's reaction to it. I am not talking of our prime minister, the Maldivian prime minister. When your ministers in cabinet have shown such hatred right. to a neighboring country's prime minister, who is the prime minister of 1.3 or 1.4 billion people, he has not sacked them. Correct. He has only put them under suspension. suspension right. So, there is no sacking. Right. So, they have already fallen for the trap. But India again, as we go back, kudos to our, um, uh, our foreign service. They have taken it in a very, very matured fashion. Okay. Saying that, okay, we will back off now. Okay. Let him face the music. Right. Sooner or later, like Sri Lanka, right. who had to come back to us for uh, for to ensure that they do not become insolvent or bankrupt, we had to bail them out. Similar things could occur here. Right. The larger threat for Maldives is there is there are studies that say that within a decade, they will be inside the water. <laughs> so, right. those are larger threats. Right. They should focus on those ecological threats rather than these uh, big player things where they will be swallowed up immediately. I know. 
and uh, it is also said that they are they are going to uh, import things from china and states and uh, they and can do anything see uh, any logistics i am talking about the economy for india will it hit no, 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 not at all see the trade if you look at if i am a maldivian uh, i would like all my inputs coming from india which is closer because my logistics cost, cost would be cheaper correct, right correct. as a maldivian right. now as an indian the percentage of my total trade in the globe vis-a-vis mm. -vis Maldives would be in decimals. decimals. I don't know which decimal, third or fourth digit. Right. So, so there's because and I asked that question because there are so many people who are crying foul here because you know our trade and then the economy will fall and then the the foreign relationships mm. and all that. So that's why I See, asked because yeah, for these foreign relationships that I keep seeing about that we have lost a foreign. Correct. See, uh, foreign relationships is like a marriage, right? right? It has its ups and downs. Right. And you cannot expect each, re every relation to be like India-Russia, which has been stable for God knows six decades now. Right. So, these countries, you will have ups and downs. Mm. Even with US, we have had sessions Sanctions. which were very good. They sanctioned us. It Correct. came down. Now, we are recovering. Correct. And uh, we recovered during Trump. During Biden, it is coming down a wee bit. Maybe it will stabilize at some point. Right. So, foreign relations will never be a straight line. Right. Unless you have very good leaders and very mature leaders. So, there is there's no much damage that will happen. Uh, like India needs to just maintain its cool. Stay away. Like the way it is doing. Like right? the way it is doing. Stay away for a wee bit. Probably give time for Maldivians to realize their own fully and come back. Right. Uh, thank you so much for all this. Now, I have few questions that our subscribers have asked you. So, maybe I will read out them. Maybe one by one you can answer. Uh, so, how a nation can be a superpower? Okay. Very interesting one. <laughs> okay. How a nation can be a superpower? Okay. So, superpowers control two things in the world. Okay. Markets and resources. We are good player in market. No. Markets and resources. Okay. And for doing these two things, they control either they control these two things using two weapons. To control that, they use these. They use two weapons. Okay. The first weapon is military. Mm. The second weapon is finance. Okay. okay. So you understand. If so I have to become a superpower, I need markets okay. to sell my goods. I need resources, cheap resources, okay. from where I get the raw material convert them, put about 400 percent, 500 percent of margin and then have a captive market where I can sell to. All the oil producing countries has this then. Okay, I will give you a classical example. Okay. Uh, you know Mali? Mali, yeah, it's okay. a tourist uh, place, no? No, <laughs> African Mali. Mali. Okay. Okay, it's a small country. Okay. It has got no gold deposits. The country okay. has got no gold deposits. Okay. France was its uh, colonizer or you say uh, superpower in its relation. France has the fourth largest gold deposits in the world, okay. but it has not, it has got no gold, there is no gold mine in France. Now you understood the relation. Right. So, a superpower is one who can exploit markets for cheap commodities, right. bring it to their nation, okay. value add on it, right. and create a market where you can sell it, preferably a monopoly. Okay. Okay. So, why do we call US a superpower or a Great Britain a superpower or Spain a superpower or China today a would be superpower is they have got markets, they had markets during their superpower regime. Mm. They had markets under their control and they had uh, resources, they had resources and markets under their control. Okay. India is a superpower. Now, we will look into these two brackets. Is India a superpower? No. As of now, no. As of now, no. Next five years, what do you think? I don't think so. No. We have a long way to go. See, uh, for you to be a superpower, you have to be a, a wee bit merciless. Merci but we don't have that. We right? don't have that attitude. We don't want that. We don't want that. See, we should be a power in our own right. Correct. For the good of humanity. Right. We don't want to subjugate somebody, take, his, take away his bread and then polish it up with butter and sell it at 400%. Right. I don't think that's our... That's in our genes or our culture. We shouldn't do it. So, we don't want to sell vaccines. We want to donate vaccines. 
I would not agree to that also okay. uh, because if you give vaccine for free, the taxpayers money is going for free unless you are giving it to impoverished nation. I would not like to give free vaccines to a developed country or to a person who is capable of buying it. No, Maldives we gave. Uh, no, no. Depending on case to case. case to if case. you are giving it to Maldives or to Sri Lanka who cannot afford it, great. That's fine. But when you say Maldives, please understand Maldivian GDP is higher than our GDP. Oh, because I mean there is so many <laughs> other factors. Whatever it is. Right. So, their purchasing potential as known, I mean according to the known metrics of the world mm -hmm. is better than mine. What so, why should I give it to now? him free of cost? No, what, what do you think will happen now, now that Indians, it seems there are 12% uh, Indians that go, hmm. and now it is reduced. So, you think that will affect uh, Maldives economy? Absolutely. 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 See, we were about 23% of the inflows of tourists was from India. We were ranked number one. Okay. Russia was close to and third so I think China was China. Chinese or somebody. Right. right? Very close. 2 lakh, 10,000, 2 lakh, 8,000, something like that. So, you remove the 2 lakhs, it is going to be quite a hit. Yes. And you not only look at this potential of 2 lakhs, you also look at the number of Indians supporting their infrastructure as doctors, as nurses, as engineers. They lose interest maybe. If in these people come back, come back imagine right. the society itself will crumble. Right. These are the after effects of you fiddling Correct. with the country. India is the largest player in the medicine industry in the world generic medicines, oh. right? If Indian's pharmaceutical industry were to stop providing medicines, right. healthcare costs around the world would shoot up. Right. So, I mean, India has a lot of uh, things going for it. There is so much potential. Potential, yes. So, yeah, we, we might need some more time. Right, so the next question is, uh, is Russia weak or strong? If strong, why they haven't, why they haven't not been able to conquer Ukraine? Okay. We, this we is another, I mean, your yeah. subscribers, sir, <laughs> I mean, I am astonished. I mean, uh, kudos to those people who have asked these questions. Russia, if anybody had any doubts, the last two years, starting from February 2022, has shown that Russia is indeed the primary military power in the world. I mm. will quantify this statement. It may sound alarmist to some people and may not convince others. So, I will explain it. U Russia is not fighting Ukraine. Okay. Russia is fighting the entire Western bloc. Okay. That is, Russia is fighting 54 countries alone. Okay. When I say Western bloc, it also includes Japan, it also includes Korea, everybody under the US umbrella, okay. right? Turkey. So, it is fighting 54 countries. NATO. NATO plus. Plus NATO. NATO plus. Okay. So, you can imagine one country fighting 54 countries and still managing to grab about 22 to 25 percent of its opponent's uh, uh, land mass and retain it. Yes. Amazing. Okay. And uh, if you look at uh, studies now, more than 100 billion dollars has been pumped into Ukraine okay. and they have lost their counter offensive that they lost in, they launched in 2023. And the Western weapons which were sent to them, be it the HIMARS, mm. be it uh, their, uh, their tanks, the Leopard tanks, the Abram tanks, the Challenger tanks, all of them have been shown to be pretty bad in battlefield conditions. Right. So, Russia in the eyes of the world has emerged as another pole okay. after 1989. After 1989, the USSR collapsed. So, after 1989, in 2023 or 24, Russia has emerged as the new star or as the new pole in a multilateral or multinational or multinational society. Okay. Okay. So, Russia is not losing the war. In fact, Russia is winning the war. Why it has not won swiftly is because of these countries supporting. About 54 nations are supporting Ukraine. And, and do you think it'll still go on? It'll go on. It'll go on. It'll go on. It may sh it may go on till November 2024, mm -hmm. when the U.S. election results will come up. Mm -hmm. If, uh, as predicted, Republicans win, then we may see a closure to the war because oh. U.S. will start walking off from Europe and that NATO. That is another big thing that we Correct. should be talking. But then maybe we'll some, some other day. Yeah, some other day. If Democrats were to surprisingly win, right. then this may go on for another three four years.
because then the supply to Ukraine will still continue. Right. So, there are many things that is that is yes, there are dependent. Lot of and buts. Right. So, and then the next question is, you said that Israel will lose manpower and equipment in Gaza. I mean, do you see evidence for the same? Yes. I think this is one of those things that has uh, come true, unfortunately. Okay. The Israeli-Gaza war has shown that in the modern battlefield, uh, you cannot achieve surprises with all those drones, all those uh, anti-tank weapons that are there. It is not there on the media for our subscribers to see because the media is controlled by the Western governments. But if you go on social media, that is the telegram and the dark web, you will come across thousands of videos which show casualties on the Israeli side. But then they have also been successful in destroying Hamas. I am not saying Israel has, uh, Hamas has escaped unscathed. Right. Both of them have suffered is the statement. Right. Then we did not expect Israel to have so many body bags. If there was a clever strategy. Okay, they, they could they have managed it better. That is what we are saying. Right. We right. expected Hamas to lose. No, but then we, you also predict, predicted that once the foot soldiers get inside the uh, Gaza, they don't know the terrain, they don't know the places, so they, they will, the, the maneuverity will I be... I said they should not go inside Gaza. Yeah. If they go inside, they'll, they'll suffer casualty. Correct. And same thing so, they should not have. If they had used the earlier 1972... Uh, like method. going after the uh, terrorists. terrorist leaders. Go right. after the terrorist leaders. Don't they, are, they are all happy in uh, Qatar. So I Wherever they are. Right. If you can hit uh, in 1960 to in 1972, if you could hit terrorists in, in Europe, all the other countries. you can hit them in Qatar. Right. Le give them some cooling of uh, time. And then revenge is a uh, dish but best served cold. After three months, they could have hit them. But then I think there is elections also in. Uh, the problem is that. Right. So he has to cater for the local population. Correct. Correct. And do you think that's that's not that's not right? I think uh, the popula Israeli population is overwhelmed by emotions now. About uh, two lakh uh, northeast North Israeli settlers have been taken out of their homes because of Hezbollah firing. So, as a person who is not staying there, it's very difficult for me to read the emotions and to read what they are looking at. But whatever they are looking at is coming from a biased point. From the longer term perspective of Israel's well-being, I think this is a wrong strategy to look at. As an Indian, I would want Israel to come out unscathed, better, economically and militarily and strategically positioned in the Middle East. The actions that they are taking now do not indicate such a possible. That is my outlook. Right. Yeah. That, that, it's okay. I mean, it's okay to have opinions. So, you said in case if the elections happen, uh, Hamas will win. Correct. In case if the elections happen in, in Israel tomorrow, don't you think Netanyahu will come back? Netanyahu has got a lot of judicial overhang on his qualification. To shadow that, you Correct. Know, this happened. No, we don't said. know what will happen in Israel because Israel is still a democratic country okay. where there are rules and there are many institutions that come into play. Mm. Whether Netanyahu will be allowed to participate, whether he can participate. That's another question. That's another question. Okay. Because there is a group, I mean, again, there is a group of people who are saying that he knew about this attack, but he sat on it. Rumors. I mean, there is nothing to qualify this. But if those things get louder and louder and louder. Well, there is a reason happens. to it. See, Mossad is known as one of the best in the world. Correct. And now and it cannot sit on such information. So, maybe that's that's why they are So, there, there, is, there are noises. We don't know where it will go. Right. Anyway, so I think there's the last question. It's again about Netanyahu. You said Netanyahu will have to leave. Is it possible? Yes. So I think you have already answered. Yes, he yeah. will have to leave. See, you look back into all wartime uh, prime ministers, mm -hmm. right from Winston Churchill. Mm -hmm. were, whoever has been good in war cannot replicate it in peace. My, uh, the, the reason for war, the reason behind war is peace. The outcome of war is peace, right? A to general peace, we go correct. For war. Yes, if you want peace, you should be ready for war, correct. and you should be strong enough <coughs> to inflict war. Why I say he cannot be the leader for post-war Israel is, he has taken a very strong, rigid position, which will not be acceptable to the world. But what about Israelis? They'll accept, no? 
as time passes it may not be palatable to them also similar is the case with israeli zelensky he cannot continue ukraine in, uh, ukraine sorry ukraine's uh, zelensky. zelensky in fact his situation is even more critical because he is losing the war badly so both these leaders i mentioned this in session 2 i think both these leaders will have to go they may not go abruptly right. there may be some smooth uh, sail off but they'll have to walk down they i don't think they'll continue but i personally want netanyahu to come back i know you would you would not uh, want him but then see wounds should not be left uh, to linger i think some people going away will allow wounds to heal quicker you cannot allow a population of the size of israel to be continuously under threat from its enemies now what happens if there is a change in administration you think the hamas yes. will back down yes why because a change in rulership at this level will suggest to hamas that okay i have changed now i want to open i want to deal with you in another way can you deal with me another way please remember hamas is also not escaped unscathed right. he is also hurt he is damaged he is bleeding right. he is also looking for a way out right. so unless there is a positional change i don't see israeli government amending its policies and if they don't amend they cannot fight till eternity because they are a very small economy very small population they have an army of 3 lakh which is moved away from the economy right they are losing the economy is losing, is losing every day correct they have to bring them back right and i have a reason for hamas not backing out because as long as they don't have that jerusalem issue sorted i don't think they'll back out because it's it's more of an ideological war it is not just with israel and hamas it is between india pakistan uh, any any islamic nation having uh, uh, cultural issues with other countries they won't back out because they uh, think about no, the power it's not a question of backing out in the sense i'm not saying that the idea will go off from their mind probably uh, you misunderstood me May, what back. i'm saying is presently we are in a stage of kinetic war okay. right we have to first stop the kinetic war you stop and then you wait for him to you stop you wait you stop kinetic war stops right. both of them go back tend to their wounded right. repair their economy rebuild their schools wait for the next generation of young men to grow up and then probably one more cycle starts okay. if you cannot continuously go to the altar if i'll give you an example if you i don't know whether you have heard of rana sanga rana sanga no no okay rana sanga was the great grandfather of uh, rana pratap okay okay A fearsome leader he had more than 80 battle wounds okay. right and he was always in the thick of war when he uh, met babar and uh, in that uh, war uh, this one happened and he he retreated because babar used cannons and he had to retreat he told his commanders that we will again fight and he was poisoned oh. okay that's the story i mean whether there is fact whether there is evidence this is the story that uh, the books tell you why because the chieftains were worried that two generations three generations of rajputs have been lost because of the war we need time okay. for a new generation to grow to fight there are no more youngsters right i mean that's the outcome of any war for that matter for a war that sustains war that sustains yes so again a very insightful uh, conversation it was i mean this is what happens every time you come uh, beautiful again let's uh, let's see for the next questions that that we get and uh, the questions that, that 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 came in was also nice and very then, nice very nice i mean pleasantly surprised yeah, yeah so uh, pretty I, deep <laughs> so i hope even the wars stop and that's what we all wish and thank you again for your insights keep coming back <laughs> thank you and uh, wish all the samvada viewers uh, uh, may lord ram bless you and your family with uh, prosperity health and happiness jai shri ram jai shri ram